It's Farm Friday. So on today's show, I'm talking about five pitching prospects. Yeah, you heard me. And five hitting prospects. That is time to put just a little bit of hope in this year. I'm talking about all that and more on this episode of Locked On Rangers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Rangers. Your daily Texas Rangers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are locked onto the World Series champion Texas Rangers. I'm Bryce Patrick, a cripplingly addicted Texas Rangers fan, covering this team for 11 seasons, including all six as the founder and host of this podcast. Thank y'all so much for making Lockdown Rangers your first listen every single day. If you're not already, you can follow me on Twitter at Bryce Patrick. You can follow the show at Locked On Rangers. Hit subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform and on YouTube, where the best way you can help grow the show is to comment nearly any single thing below. Now, before we get into the five hitting prospects and pitching prospects that should give you just a little bit of hope this year, today's episode is brought to you by Tax Network USA. Did you know that it's never too late to resolve your issues with the IRS? Don't wait. Reduce your tax debt and get help from a team of licensed tax professionals. Call 1-800-549-1000 or visit tnusa.com slash locked on. Now on today's show, I'm talking about, yes, you heard me, some hope for Rangers pitching prospects. I, I know you've all been burned just as much as me, maybe maybe even more than me, just hoping on Rangers pitching prospects in general. And as a, as a general rule of thumb for the last yeah, decade, two decades, 17,000 decades, as long as the Rangers have been in Arlington, uh, it hasn't exactly been the safest thing to hope on a Rangers pitching prospect. But but these five are different, probably. I'm hoping so. But if not, it, you know, it's good to just acknowledge the wins, acknowledge some good play, some good pitching from Rangers pitching prospects while it's happening. Um, because these guys have been legitimately very, very good this year. And the number one guy that I want to start with is, of course, Emiliano Toyota. I've talked about him quite a bit this year. Um, he has just been sensational this year so far. I, I think it feels pretty safe to say he has been the Rangers' best pitching prospect this season. He has. It doesn't feel in any way outlandish to say that. I saw him for one of his one of his bad starts he's only had one actual bad start this year that was the first start of the year two and two-thirds innings where he allowed four earned runs and that was one of two count of two starts this year of his 11 where he allowed multiple earned runs let me say that again he's only had two starts this year where he's allowed multiple earned runs one of them he allowed four one of them he allowed two Every other start this year has been zero or one earned runs. Nine of his 11 starts so far this year. Zero or one earned runs. That's phenomenal. That's absolutely phenomenal. Now, the walks are still a little bit of a problem, but his last start, I mean, his last start against the Amarillo Sod Poodles on the 16th of June was absolutely dominant. Just dominance out of him. Five innings, two hits, 11 strikeouts, and just one walk. He threw 68 pitches. 47 of those were for strikes. Now get this. Of those 47 strikes, 22 of them were swinging. Let me say that again. 22 of his 68 pitches total were swings and misses. And 11 of them were called strikes. So he threw 68 pitches, nearly half of those pitches. If he, if he had one more whiff or one more called strike looking, half of the pitches that he threw in that game were whiffs or called strikes. That's insane. That's absolutely insane out of him. He has just been so incredibly good. He has been going, you know, four, five, six innings, really five or more innings in all but three of his starts so far this year. He even went six in a couple of his starts this year. Still building up that full stamina. The most pitches he's thrown in his start all season was 84. He's only gone over the 80 pitch mark twice on the year, and those were both the times where he threw six innings. And he has just been very, very good this year. I mean, it's, it comes down to simply this. If he is in the zone, he is one of the better pitching prospects in 
all of minor league baseball. I mean, the stuff is just disgusting. The changeup is starting to play like an at least passable to average pitch. And that really helps when you got a fastball that has got that massive sinking movement that's sitting in the upper 90s, you know, touching back there for 100 up to 102 whenever he wants it. Plus that slurve that he sometimes makes look more like a slider, sometimes more like a curve, sometimes in the middle or the slurve that, you know, he's throwing it for strikes. He's throwing it for chases. He, he's, you know, mixing up the velocity, which is really messing up with hitters. It, it makes him a really, really dangerous pitcher. And there was a lot of talk of, well, well since he was, you know, one of the, the most, he was the most dominant reliever in the Arizona Fall League last year. Well, it seems like because this guy throws 100, let's just stick him in the bullpen. Well, if you're throwing 100 as a starter, that, that's a little bit better, especially if you can stick as that starter. You could stay in the zone and avoid those walk problems that are what get most starting pitching prospects moved to the bullpen. And that's what happened with Jonathan Hernandez and Jose Leclerc. And, uh, well, I'm hoping that it doesn't happen with Emiliano Teodo. He has been such a huge bright spot for the Rangers this season. The only reason I haven't talked more about him this year is because it, there's no such thing as a pitching prospect, which it's it's a dumb saying, but it's it's kind of accurate. I mean, so many things have to go right. But, you know, he, he has looked every bit the part of a legit starter. I mean, he's 23 years old in double A. He's you know, about you know the average age of the players in this league, and he's looked really darn good. I mean, he, he just is. He's a good, a really good pitcher right now, and that's incredibly encouraging. I mean, he's still one and a half years younger than the average player or pitcher in the Texas League, so I mean, still a little bit ahead of schedule. But uh, this is an encouraging sign. It's something that absolutely needs to be celebrated. It's it's not something that I necessarily saw coming last year. I mean, when you see a guy who who throws what was called at the time, I thought a curveball at 90 miles an hour, you think, whoa, that's something special. Oh, he's, he's also got a fastball that maybe strays an arrow but goes up to 102. I think 103 is the highest he's touched. You think, okay, well, that's a third pitch. Then you, you let him stick as a starter as long as he can. And if he's getting better as a starter, as he's progressing through the system, like it, not just better, like, you know, in general, because you, you have to be better to progress a level. You, you have to get better, obviously, because the hitters at each level are better, but better compared to the levels. This is the best he's done against pretty much any competition in minor league baseball outside of, you know, that, um, you know, eight games in the Arizona Fall League. I mean, this is this is the best he's looked. I mean, even the Arizona Complex League down east, he didn't dominate any of those leagues like this. So this is incredibly encouraging stuff. And he's he's building up, you know, that arsenal. He's building up that that workload. The most he's, innings he's thrown in a single year was uh, 2022, where he threw 84 in a third innings. Last year, he only got up to 72 in two-thirds innings because he was a little slow out of the gates, was dealing with an injury to start the season last year. Um, but this year, he's, he started out absolutely phenomenal, and it is uh, hugely encouraging. And he might even not be the best pitching prospect in this Rangers system because the other guy, the next guy I'm going to talk about, Alejandro Rosario. I mean, what a freaking year Alejandro Rosario is having. This is a any anything but a huge scouting, like, uh, th th this is this can't be construed as anything but a massive, massive scouting win for the Rangers. A guy who spent three years in college at uh, the University of Miami in Florida with a six-and-a-half ERA, and the Rangers saw something there. They saw something in those 200 innings. It was much better than that six-and-a-half ERA. And as a starter this year, his first taste of pro ball, he's 22 years old, right around league average age in down east. He has been just freaking untouchable so far. 42 and a third innings, nine starts so far, a sub one and a half ERA, striking out 13 batters per nine, walking right around one batter per nine. I mean, he has just been disgusting so far in the best possible way to, to the point where I don't know how many more starts he's got in down east before he moves on up to high A Hickory. I don't think he has that much more to learn, that much more that he can improve on against hitters in the Carolina League because he is just so much better than them. And this is incredibly encouraging. A guy who, you know, not a lot of people were, were thinking much about. I mean, he was a fifth-round pick back in the 2023 draft, and you thought, okay, well, the Rangers must see something in this guy. Um, but he has been so freaking good this year, just 
absolutely out of nowhere, a fifth round pick turning into this. Hmm. This is not something the Rangers have done a whole lot of, of, of get these guys in these later rounds, especially a guy, you know, who didn't really perform super well at a high college level, at a, you know, a prestigious college program and find something in there. This is what the smart organizations do. This is what the teams like, you know, Cleveland and, and like, you know, the Dodgers and, and like the Rays. These are what the smart drafting and developing teams do. So you're going to start getting wins like this on guys like him and guys like Emilio Antero that you just kind of pull out of thin air. It's absolutely massive for this team moving forward because uh, even though the starting pitching hasn't been the problem for the Rangers this year, you're looking long term and them not being able to develop starters. It, it could pose a problem for them having to keep spending on free agent starting pitchers who are old and who do suffer these injuries. But you start pulling out, you pull out one or two decent to good homegrown starters, especially if you pulled the, weren't guys who were just super highly touted prospects, like the ones you expect to be great, like Jack Leiter, you know, like Brock Porter, like Kumar Rocker. That is a huge, huge win for your organization. Coming away, uh, still more three more pitching prospects you should get excited about this year and 10 hitting prospects, as well as a little bit of a look at how some guys are progressing on their rehab assignments. Right after this, we're from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Stitch Fix. You know that instant confidence boost you get from an outfit that makes you look really good? Well, that's what I get with Stitch Fix. With Stitch Fix, you get a stylist that understands your style, size, and budget. They do all the shopping for you, and it is the easiest way to update your wardrobe this season. I just give my stylist my size, budget preferences, and I order style as well. And they, they, I order boxes when I want, how I want, no subscription required. And they send five just-for-me pieces, plus outfit recommendations and pro styling advice as well. I keep what works, and I send back the rest. My stylist always sends just right pieces, and the fit is on point. It's like they have style ESP. I don't know how they do it, but they just get me. Stitch Fix makes it all so easy. I don't like to shop, and you know they save me all that time and effort. Plus, I get outfits that make me look good and feel really good. And if you don't love something, just send it back. Shipping returns and exchanges are always free. Style that makes you feel as good as you look. Now it's the best time to get started at stitchfix.com slash MLB and get $100 off. That's $25 off your first four fixes for a limited time only. That's stitchfix.com slash MLB for $100 off. Stitchfix.com slash MLB. Must redeem within seven days of sign-up. Offer does not include kids' fixes. Now, this next prospect is a little more under the radar. A guy who you know, doesn't have a whole lot of prospect hype on him, but he is a lefty. Listed as relievers, has spent some time in the bullpen and also in the rotation. That is left-handed pitcher Cole Drake. The 6'5", 225-pound lefty was an 11th round pick by the Rangers back in 2022, drafted out of the uh, powerhouse Walters State Community College in Morristown, Tennessee. He has been, well, he just got promoted to Frisco. He was absolutely tearing apart down east. Yeah, you heard me. He went right from down east all the way to Frisco. It spent a little bit of time in the minors last year, just 46 and two thirds innings in the minors last year after getting drafted, spent time in the years in a complex league where he was really, really solid. Um, only 11, two thirds innings though, 18 strikeouts, just absolutely dominating there. Spent more time in the Carolina league in uh, down East. He's pitched 35 innings there with a near seven and a half ERA, just a little bit below seven and a half in those 35 innings, but you know, struggled a bit with the walks, struggled a bit with, you know, batted ball and, and hard contact. But this year went right back to down East was a little bit older than the average pitcher at that level, you know, 1.3 years older than the average pitcher in that level, then jumped straight up to double A because he was absolutely tearing apart down east. 37 innings, 61 strikeouts, nearly 15 Ks per nine, under two walks per nine, and a sub two ERA in 37 innings. That's that's enough to jump you up a couple of levels. And his first outing for Frisco was absolutely not pretty. Not what he was hoping for. Started the game, only went one in a third innings, allowed six walks and four earned runs. All of those runs were earned, but, you know, three of his four outs were on strikeouts. So still a bit of a rough patch in that first outing, but again, it's just one outing. and It is a huge, huge jump for anybody to make. Um, he's a little bit younger than the average pitcher. 
in the Texas League, but still a big, big jump for him. I, I think it shows that the Rangers are very, very excited about this kid and what he can do. Um, that is uh, definitely a sign that they have big confidence in him to jump him a full level. It doesn't happen very often. Um, actually, excuse me, that was just one outing, and he went right back. I thought that just happened. Excuse me, that was back on the 18th. It started one game in Down East, one game in double uh, a and then jumped a week later right back um to down east where he has stayed his most recent outing was his best of the season five innings just six hits zero earned runs or unearned runs as well just one walk in 10 strikeouts for him a really really good outing for him 15 strikes looking 17 swings and misses the most he's had on the season a really really good outing for him there um so definitely got to keep an eye on Uh, i don't know if he is going to stick as a starter um, or if the rangers are going to move him more to a bullpen role he's been kind of doing the uh, tandem starter thing at this point as have a lot of pitchers in the carolina league um so um yeah cole drake a guy to keep your eyes on Next guy on this list is someone who I've talked about a little bit um, earlier this year. Um, it is Winston Santos, a guy who has really relied a whole lot on his fastball early on in his career. But uh, once hitters knew that it was you know just relying too much on that fastball and the other stuff wasn't quite up to par, um, he started getting hit and getting hit hard. But this year he's developed a slider that has been very, very good. He's also got a, a changeup that is, you know, passable, and that fastball is still really darn good. It's not up there in the, you know, sitting 98, 99, um, like Emilio Antietos, but the the shape of it is really darn good and it pairs super, super well with the slider on the year. He's twenty he's twenty two years old, pitching for high eight hickory. He's got an ERA of two forty three and nearly sixty innings on the year. He's got eighty strikeouts, fifty nine in a third innings to be specific. Um, but under three walks per nine, over 12 Ks per nine. Um, He he has been really darn good this year, and I'm excited to see him in double-A Frisco. I'm thinking at some point this season. Not exactly sure when the Rangers are going to bump him up, but I am really, really excited to see what he can do at the double-A level. That is a big, big jump for anybody. Um, And so seeing him make that jump and just getting some eyes on him in person will be, it's something I'm really, really looking forward to later on this year. But the last guy, number five on this list is Joseph Montalvo. Also a 22 year old, also in high eight hickory, not pitching uh, quite as many innings per start and hasn't pitched quite as many innings as Winston Santos, but still a really, really solid year. 47 innings for him, 60 strikeouts, um, limiting the walks a little bit better than what Winston Santos is doing. He's a guy who I, I thought about including on my top 30, but just kind of missed the cut, kind of in that 31 to 35 range. He might end up jumping on to my midseason top 30 prospects, but um, really good year for him so far. Uh, last year, he spent the year at Down East, where he had a sub-3 ERA, 107 strikeouts and 95 in a third innings, and was also solid in his first year of professional ball. That was in the Arizona Complex League back in 2022 as a 20-year-old. So, um, again, really, really solid year for him so far. Out a 20th round draft pick drafted out of Puerto Rico, um, or he was born in Puerto Rico and he was drafted out of the Central Point Christian Academy in uh, Kissimmee, Florida. So a guy to keep an eye on as well. Those are the five pitching prospects you should be getting just a little bit hyped about. As for the hitting prospects, it's been a little bit lighter of a year, especially in the upper levels. There has not been a whole lot to get super duper excited about, but you got to go low. You got to go low. And when you look low in this system and the lower levels not low talent quality but just lower levels lower ages guys who are pretty far away there are some exciting prospects that uh you should definitely keep an eye on the first one of those that i want to talk about is jeremy cabrera who is having just a heck of a year just a heck of a year down in the arizona complex league this year his first season of stateside ball he's 18 years old he was signed out of the dominican republic plays the outfield hits left-handed throws left-handed listed at 511 155 pounds still got some got some room to grow um for sure but in 26 games so far this year in the complex league he has been just absolutely crushing it 286 404 619 slash line that is a 1023 ops yeah that's seven home runs in 26 games so far which you don't see very often 
from a kid that age, putting that kind of power numbers up. It's really encouraging. And the strikeout rate isn't something that's, you know, incredibly out of hand. Usually sometimes you'll see that a lot, even with the, you know, higher rated prospects, guys who, you know, have these insane strikeout rates when they, they get to Arizona Complex League and um, are in those lower levels, but only 24 strikeouts in 104 plate appearances. And you've got 17 walks. So, you know, keeping those in check, I mean, the on-base above 400 as an 18-year-old in the Complex League, that's really, really encouraging to see. Seeing a lefty with that kind of power at that age, that is also incredibly encouraging to see. And he's played mostly center field. That's another great sign. Seeing a guy who is putting up these kind of power numbers while playing mostly center field, that is really encouraging. He's played nine games in center field this year. He's played seven at DH, seven in left field, three in right field. And there's another reason why he hasn't played all those games in center field because there is a young man who is also crushing it quite a bit in his first season of stateside ball. That is Pablo Guerrero, who is the Rangers' most, I guess, top, high, high, most uh, highly rated international signee in the class of 2023, played in the Dominican Summer League last year, 36 games, four home runs from that year, a 721 OPS as a guy who was two years younger. He was 16 years old and playing in his first year of pro ball. This year at 17, he's already stateside, nearly three years younger than the average player in the complex league. His numbers aren't astonishing they aren't you know world changing but they are really good for his age at this level hitting 267 on base in the 340s slugging 475 he got four home runs seven doubles one triple in 29 games so far this year at the Arizona Complex League level strikeout numbers are a, a bit high but again he's 17 playing stateside ball that is incredibly encouraging and it does not happen very often he's got 34 strikeouts in 114 plate appearances but still 10 walks, pretty solid. This guy is a guy who was touted to move highly through the system, earn comparisons to Julio Rodriguez, which I feel like is is, is super weighty, especially as, as a kid who you know signed at such a young age. I mean, he is still just 17, doesn't turn 18 until July 31st, um, which is you know, right around the cutoff um, for, for about being about as young as you can sign. He's played a little bit of first base. He's played a little bit of left field, um, 20 games at first base in all across all minor league seasons, 15 games in left field, just three in right field and seven at DH. So still not a whole lot of games in his minor league career, just 65. But again, being 17, being a stateside, that tells you all you should need to know about how much the Rangers believe in his in this kid. And also, his numbers. Pretty darn solid, even for a kid at that age. Come on, we're talk about the other hitters you should be excited about in this Rangers system that are putting together some really solid seasons and a little bit of a look ahead to this weekend. Right after this word from our sponsors. Here on Locked On Rangers, we pride ourselves on getting you the latest news for your team. Whether it's the offseason, the draft, spring training, or the playoffs, it's year-round. You know what else is year-round? Collection season. Just because tax season is over doesn't mean the IRS will stop coming after you for unfiled taxes. The IRS can garnish your wages, garnish your wages, levy your bank accounts, and even seize your property. Don't let the IRS target you. Let the licensed professionals and tax experts at Tax Network USA go to bat for you. With over 14 years of experience and an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau, Tax Network USA has saved their clients over $1 billion in tax debt. Whether you owe taxes, have complicated matters that require tax planning, or finally hit that parlay this season and need help correctly filing, call 1-800-549-1000 or visit tnusa.com slash locked on. See the link in the episode description below. Now, the next hitting prospect on this list is someone who I, I'm pretty sure did crack my top 30, has gone in and out at times because uh, there, there's been some left to be desired, but he is still a youngster um, turning, he only turns 20 um, in, let's see, a week from today as I am recording this, so um, six days from today as you are listening to this, that is Glider Figueroa. A third base prospect who's listed at six foot, 165 pounds. I think he's probably a little bit more than that now. Hits left-handed, plays third base, and packs a wallop, which we hadn't really seen in his bat. The defensive skills are, they're fine. 
at third base. Maybe he'll end up moving to first base eventually as he starts to fill out a little bit. Um, but he is still just 20 years old. He is in down east for the third straight year. And I think it's, I think it's about time that he gets a promotion. He has been in Down East for parts of three seasons. The full season last year, 170 games there. Only played six games there, but made it to full season ball as an 18-year-old. Really, really struggled there. Last year, his numbers weren't great at Down East, and so starting him there a third year, I guess technically it would be a second full season there, wasn't exactly the most encouraging vote of confidence, but uh, last year we didn't really see those power numbers that we had seen for a brief stretch. It, really, the most impressive stretch of his career that really put him on the prospect radar was his 35 games in the Arizona Complex League as an 18-year-old in 2022. Again, just under 150 plate appearances, but he had nine home runs, five triples, five doubles, a 979 OPS as an 18-year-old in the Complex League. Two years younger than the average player at that league, he was absolutely crushing it offensively. I mean, on base in the 360s, you know, slugging over 600 in that span. And then the power just didn't really show up in down east in those six games and then didn't show up really for the full season last year. I mean, 450 plate appearances, he only had nine home runs. This year, he's got 11 homers in 254 plate appearances so far for down east. He's got four triples and nine doubles. Yeah. He has been crushing it. 24 extra base hits in 254 plate appearances. I think it's just about time that he gets a promotion because he is finally showing that slugging that we have seen from him at times and really came in spurts last year. Um, not a whole lot of good spurts of it last year, um, but seeing it show up in games um, is definitely very encouraging to see um, this year. A, a quick note on some other pitching prospects, uh, someone I just wanted to give a quick shout out, um, Tepid Participation tweeted about this guy, um, someone who, just to keep on your radar, I don't know that I'm quite super hyped on him just yet, um, but David Davalio, um, who is a right-handed starting pitching prospect in down east, he's got a, a 171 ERA in 47 and a third innings. Um, not quite nine strikeouts per nine. The walk rate is pretty good in 2.7 walks per nine. Uh, I would like that K number to be just a little bit higher for being a 21 year old at Down East, but a really darn good season. And also Isaac Tiger, guy who has been a reliever. I think the Rangers are going to try and transition him as a starter. who's touched all the way up to, uh, I believe, 97 miles an hour. Also, fantastic name. He is going to start his season this year. He has been injured and has not pitched yet this year, so he is going to start in Class A at some point this week. Um, Sean McFarland of the Dallas Morning News was writing about that earlier, and this week when he was uh, talking about the Rangers pitching prospect who will miss the rest of the season with elbow surgery, and that is Jose Corniel, who uh, I got to correct myself earlier this week. I was saying that he was having a solid season, and I was remembering that from last year. He hasn't pitched yet this year, and he will not pitch this year. So we'll we'll see when we eventually get Jose Corniel back, but I just wanted those couple of notes on some Rangers pitching prospects. The next guy on this list is a guy who oh, you've probably heard of because he is the best Rangers hitting prospect now that um, I don't know if Wyatt Langford has officially graduated from prospect list. He's definitely graduated from mine. He's a big leaguer now. Um, but that is Sebastian Walcott, who was given a very aggressive assignment starting in high A Hickory this year. Um, a very, very difficult assignment, which um, was was real tough for that first month of the season. I mean, a 643 OPS in the month of April, a 646 OPS in the month of May. But in the month of June... 14 games so far, he's hitting 339 and on base of 389, slugging 554, a 941 OPS. That is incredibly encouraging. Strikeout numbers are still a bit high. At 19 Ks in 62 plate appearances so far this month. But hey, seeing this kid put up these kind of numbers. And also, by the way, he's also crushing it in the clutch. 35 plate appearances with two outs and runners in scoring position. A slash line of 333, 486, 704, and 1189 OPS um, with just as many walks as strikeouts with two outs and runners in scoring position. That's just a fun little note because it seems like Sebastian Walcott, when he is challenged, he really steps up to that challenge as an 18-year-old who is starting to figure out high A. If we see him in double A as an 18-year-old, I mean, that that <laughs> lets you know that this kid 
is absolutely the real deal. I thought there was absolutely a chance that this kid could flame out before he even reached double A because he's got so much swing miss in his game. He's really, really raw. And all the talent in the world. But, um, you know, there is just a lot of swing and miss in his game. And, and starting him this season at Hickory, where he's 4.2 years younger than the average position player in the South Atlantic League. Four years younger. That's crazy. And he's starting to figure it out. I mean, his overall season number, he's got a 722 OPS. Heck, that's the fourth best on his team. It is not a great offensive environment, and he is crushing it offensively. Did I mention he's 18 freaking years old? Incredibly encouraging. The last pitch hitting prospect that I want to mention is, of course, a catcher. Of course, it's a catcher. Catching prospects always have a special place in my heart. And that, of course, is Jesus Lopez, the 19-year-old out of Lara, Venezuela. Jesus Lopez has been doing a great job this year. Being 19 and being in full season ball, that is an encouraging sign. And, and for him being a catcher, that's already this advanced and you know putting up solid offensive numbers. Not awe-inspiring, not jaw-dropping, not you know world-stopping, but really solid numbers while playing catcher every day. Hitting 284 and on base in the 340s, slugging over 400 um, with 752 OPS. That's solid. That's solid in 162 plate appearances. That is really, really solid. Learning how to play catcher is hard. Catchers are unicorns. And if you can find a catcher who can hit or even hit, like be an average offensive player and be solid defensively, I mean, you get just about any catcher up, up to Bobby Wilson. He's going to turn them into a really darn good defensive catcher. I mean, we, we've seen him do it with Andrew Kisner this year. We, we we saw him turn Jonah Heim, who was already a good defensive catcher, into one of, if not the best defensive catchers in the league. That is an encouraging sign for sure. Uh, I don't really have too much time to look into this weekend series against Kansas City. I was talking with my cousin today at dinner, who is from Kansas City, who is a Royals fan. He said he's very happy about this Kansas City Royals season, but... Other than Bobby Witt Jr. and uh, Salvador Perez, he's not really buying it so far. And, you know, I'm encouraged um, by what Kansas City has done so far. They have been in a bit of a downturn as of late, so maybe the Rangers are catching them at the right time. I think Max Scherzer it hasn't been officially announced, but it's all but announced that Max Scherzer is going to be starting on Saturday. I'm really excited to see him make his season debut at the big league level. Every arm added to this rotation is a huge benefit to this team. Josh Young, by the way, started his rehab. He's been solid. He's been fine. Nothing spectacular. Hitting the ball hard. Looking like Josh Young. Still probably a couple weeks away from making his major league debut um, for, I guess, re-debut, whatever. <laughs> um, his major league return. Let's say that. Um, but those are some hitting and pitching prospects you should be a little bit excited about this year. And hopefully the big league team can start winning just a little bit more. So we can focus, take the focus back on to them. That's going to do it for today's show. Thank you all so much for listening and subscribing. And until next time, don't forget to enjoy World Series champion Texas Rangers baseball.